160 years ago on a battlefield in Pennsylvania, President Abraham Lincoln spoke at that dedication, asking that the many gathered to acknowledge that those that they were there to honor gave the last full measure of devotion. And today we are with the family whose son, brother, and husband was given that last full measure of devotion. Chief Special Warfare Operator Michael Ernst. In May, I was in Section 60 of Arlington National Cemetery with my daughter, Air Force Captain Joanna Montaneri, visiting with and praying for Michael. To bring that moment to the present, I introduced Deacon Matthew Harrington of St. Anthony Parish to deliver the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we gather today for the dedication of this square in memory of our departed brother, we pray to God who watches over all. The response to each intention is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of our brother Michael, who was suddenly taken from us, let us pray to the Lord. For all those who mourn, especially the family and friends of our brother, let us pray to the Lord. For all who serve their country in the armed forces, that God will guide and protect them, let us pray to the Lord. For the people of the town of Cohasset, that they may be touched by the love of God, let us pray to the Lord. For all of us who are gathered here today, that this ceremony will help us honor Michael's memory and pray for him. Let us pray to the Lord. May your mercy, we beseech you, O Lord, be with your people who cry to you, so that what they seek at your prompting, they may obtain by your ready generosity through Christ our Lord, Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Chief Special Warfare Operator Michael T. Ernst left Cohasset in August 2009 and enlisted in the United States Navy. Following his enlistment, he attended the rigorous basic underwater demolition SEAL training in 2010. We can look up in today's vast information formats about SEAL training and be overwhelmed. I recommend a short book written by Admiral William McRaven, retired, entitled Make Your Bed. The title refers to the first task accomplished each day and described in the book. It is an expansion of a graduation address to the University of Texas that went viral. If you want to know what Michael went through to become a SEAL, read the book. I gave copies to my children. Michael served numerous missions in Afghanistan alongside fellow SEALs and other coalition forces. In Iraq, he contributed to efforts aimed at dismantling ISIS networks with key raids on targets. While deployed to Africa under counterterrorism initiatives, Michael helped train local military personnel while also engaging in intelligence gathering operations. Michael was highly decorated for his actions in service. The Silver Star for gallantry against enemy forces. Additionally, the Joint Services Commendation Medal, Army Commendation Medal, Combat Action Ribbon, Good Navy Conduct Medal, Afghanistan Campaign Medal, Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, and Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medals. I will close by citing excerpts from the Honorable Cave Granger of Texas in the Congressional Record of March 24th. He was an American hero who dedicated his life in service of our country. Prior to the Navy, he graduated Denison University with a Bachelor in Economics and an introduction to his future bride. Megan and the children, Riley and Julie. He committed himself to self-improvement and received his master's degree in business administration from MIT in 2022. Mr. Speaker, let us recognize the sacrifices he made. He was a larger-than-life man and a warrior who served both our nation and his family honorably. Now, I can tell you what Michael did, but I'm going to introduce Mr. Rob Carpenter, a longtime friend. 
he will tell you who Michael was. Rob Carter. Good afternoon. My name is Rob Carpenter, one of Mike's oldest friends, and it's an honor to speak with you today. First off, I'd like to thank everyone involved in making this amazing dedication come true. A special thanks to Glenn Pratt of the Veterans Memorial Committee, Phil Mahoney, Veterans Service Officer, and the Town of Cohasset. For those of you who attended Mike's Memorial in Virginia Beach, one of the most moving parts of that spe the speeches was when Captain Liam McEwen, Navy Special Warfare Basic Training Commander said, "C Monumentum Requires Kirkham Spike, which is an epitaph inscribed on a plaque on the floor of St. Paul Cathedral, where Christopher Wren, its, its architect, is buried. It means, if you seek his monument, look around. The sentiment resonated on base that day at his interment in Arlington, at the Thayer Memorial, and certainly here today. We've had the chance over the last eight months to remember Mike, his incredible accomplishments from his amazing family and life with, with Meg, Riley, and Jude, persevering through BUDS and SQT, achieving his goal of DevGru selection, receiving a silver star, the United States Armed Forces' third highest decoration for valor in combat, as well as several other awards and distinctions. We've heard countless stories of how Mike touched so many, how he treated everyone with respect, how he was always willing to help and teach and lead, and just being an incredible husband, father, brother, uncle, and friend. But today I want to speak a little bit about the impact Mike has had on us since his passing. I know I'm not the only one, so many of us have experienced unexplainable things where we felt Mike's present in our day, presence in our daily lives. So here are a few stories. Mike's fate always seemed, always was always a possibility, but nothing we thought would ever come a reality. He seemed invincible. But I'm sure Mike was more aware, aware of the possibility and wanted to do everything he could to provide comfort to those he loved if the worst ever did happen. Certainly his muddy talk was one of those things. And if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend watching the Thayer Memorial video. Over the last decade, Mike would send boxes of old gear to my son, Finn, who is obsessed with, with the Navy, to play with. The morning after he passed, my son ran up to his room and brought down an advanced training coin Mike had earned and put in one of the boxes of gear he sent. I was unaware that he sent it, but Finn said he wanted me to have it. A couple months later, I arrived in DC for Mike's interment. I sat down next to Kevin Plant, his closest high school friend at the hotel bar, pulled the coin out of my pocket and told him about my son's thoughtful gesture. When I finished, Kev reached into his pocket and pulled out the exact same coin something we'll both remember for the rest of our lives. Another story. A few months after Mike's passing, my sister Kate's three-year-old daughter, Ayla, for some reason got obsessed with frogs. She started randomly asking, where's the frog, where's the frog? They couldn't explain where it came from. She never met Mike, but when Kate was wearing the Ernie shirt, those of you who attended Virginia Beach and the memorial know that shirt. Ayla said, Mommy, there's a monster in my closet, but pointing to the back of Kate's shirt said, that man will protect me. And just this past week, Ayla got hurt and said she needed to hug, she needed her frog man to feel better. So Kate grabbed the last, his picture from the Thayer Memorial for her to look at. If there's any dispute that she isn't or isn't connecting with, with her, she pointed to the picture and said, that frogman has an amazing beard. <laughs> now we all know there's only one person that could have planted that in her head. Other times, Mike just screws with us. Last month, I was in DC for work. I visited Arlington to have a morning cup of black coffee with my buddy. 
Those who knew Mike know it's the only way to drink coffee. I had my headphones in listening to my Ernie playlist. All the songs that remind me of him. Oddly enough, I noticed canine units were all over the place. And when I was walking back from section 60, someone tapped me on the shoulder and asked me to exit through the outside gate. I thought nothing of it and started a three mile run back to my hotel. What I was oblivious to was at 8.40 a.m. in the midst of my coffee with Mike, someone had called in a bomb threat to Arlington. There I am on foot running from the scene. <laughs> I don't know how I wasn't form tackled or at least stopped at security in the DC airport, but I'm sure Mike had a good laugh. One last story. Mike's sister Callie took on the incredible feat of running the Aspen Marathon in her honor, in his honor. She trained like Mike would have for that race, all in. As the race approached, she embarked on her longest practice run, 15 miles. She opted to run a portion of the Rio Grande Trail where her and Mike had run on Christmas together a few years prior. Towards the end of the run, in the same spot they had run together, she suddenly heard another set of feet. She looked up behind her, took out a he her headphones, and then felt something she couldn't quite describe. In her words, it was a tightness in my chest, but not the kind that makes it hard to run or breathe. It was a comforting tightness, like a hug, giving me strength to finish strong. I cried those last few miles as I felt Mike running alongside me. Losing Mike has been brutal, but these experiences <laughs> give us some level of comfort as so many of us feel his presence so often. I love coming back to Cohasset, driving down 3A and passing the good sport where Mike and I worked together through high school and college, or driving through downtown Cohasset to the harbor where we spent much of our youth, or seeing his plaque at the, at the harbor where every year we honor our active duty veterans and fallen soldiers on Memorial Day. So many places we feel Mike, Mike's present and it reminds us of the incredible person we are all so lucky to know. And now, we have another beautiful place to feel Mike. One more place that to seek his mo monument, we can just look around. Thank you. Unveiling the plaque will be done by Staff Sergeant Paul Kearse and the band who Megan will bring Jude and Riley up to the place to read.
Firing detachment. Prepare salute.
afternoon. My name is Chris Pratt. I'm a member of the Cohasset Veterans Memorial Committee, Cohasset resident, and U.S. Army veteran. Welcome to the rededication of the Gold Star Mothers Memorial, where today we pay special tribute to Gold Star Mother Mary Ernst, the mother of Chief Special Warfare Operator Navy SEAL Michael T. Ernst. To our Gold Star families, our distinguished guests, family, friends, fellow veterans, thank you all for being here today to share in this solemn occasion as we honor the sacrifice of the Ernst family, especially his mother, and to memorialize the legacy of Chief Michael Ernst, a legacy of a selfless patriot, an elite warrior, a decorated hero, a loving husband and father, and a beloved son. We are honored to have with us Chief Ernst's parents, Mary and Bob, his brother Luke and sister Maggie, and wife, Megan, and two beautiful children, Riley and Jude. Thank you for being here. If you would now please rise for the playing of our national anthem. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift Michael fought for righteousness' sake, even until death, grant, we pray, that like him we may bear every adversity and trial in this life, and so hasten towards you who alone are life. Show us, Lord, the immense power of your goodness, and as we weep for our brother Michael taken from us by a sudden death, we may be confident that he has passed over to your eternal company. As we have been strengthened by the mystery of the cross and promised to share in the resurrection, mercifully grant that Michael may be gathered into the company of your chosen ones. God of mercy and compassion, soothe the hearts of Mary and all Gold Star Mothers together with their husbands and families and through the prayers of the Blessed Virgin Mary, who grieved at the foot of the cross of her son, may you give hope to their hearts and peace to their lives. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. For our opening remarks, please welcome Vice Chair of the Coasset Select Board and United States Marine Corps veteran, Paul Reed. Good afternoon. For the turnover, uh, deservedly so. We are here today to honor the memory of Michael Arms, Michael, a Navy Special Warfare Operator, and highly decorated Navy SEAL pastor and training our site earlier this year. 
Michael enlisted the Navy in 2009 and attended SEAL training the following year. Over the last 10 years, he served as a, in an East Coast Special Warfare Unit and was known as an exceptional teammate willing to apply himself to any challenge. He was known as a mentor and a role model. Michael served in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Africa. Michael's exceptional will and fortitude is recognized by all he serves his country, and he served his country with distinction and was awarded many military decorations, including the Joint Service Commendation Medal, the Army Commendation Medal, three Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medals, the Army Achievement Medal, the Combat Action Ribbon, the Good Conduct Medal, the Afghanistan Campaign Medal, the Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, and three Sea Service Deployment Ribbons. Michael's bravery in combat was also honored with a silver star. He was an example of exemplary service and dedication to his country. Michael was a husband to Megan, father to Riley and Jude, and the son of Robert and Mary, and a beloved brother. A native of Odessa, he grew up in Border Street, and I understand his grandfather was there one young. Michael is the town's first service member who formed the line of duty in 54 years. The entire community of Cohasset is proud of Michael, his heroic contributions, his service, and his sacrifice. We mourn his loss along with his family and hope to honor his memory and his achievements in the years to come. It is my honor, having served in the United States Marine Corps and as Vice Chair of the Select Board of the Town of Cohasset, to make today's proclamation, dedicating this monument not only to Michael's mother, but to his family and honor his legacy of distinction and patriotism and express our gratitude for his service and recognition of his ultimate sacrifice. In closing, and before I read the proclamation, I would like to add that as a fellow service member, it always humbles me when someone says thank you for your service. In honoring Michael today on this hallowed ground, I would also say this to Megan, Jude, Riley, the Ernst family, and all the mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, children, brothers, and sisters of our fallen heroes, thank you for your service. For you too have made the ultimate sacrifice in having served our country. I will now read the proclamation written by the chair of our capacity select board, Jean Healy Dippel. Proclamation. Whereas, Michael T. Ernst was a native son of Cohasset and grew up in a large family. And whereas Michael T. Ernst was inspired by his commitment to his country, enlisted in the United States Navy, and became Chief Special Warfare Operator in the Navy SEAL. Whereas Michael Ernst, following his multiple deployments around the world, was awarded for his valor in many instances, including being awarded the Silver Star, the nation's third highest for valor in combat, in combat and the Joint Commendation Medal with Combat Device. Army Commendation Medal, three Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medals, Army Achievement Medal, Combat Action Medal, Good Conduct Medal, Afghanistan Campaign Medal, Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary Medal, Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, three Sea Service Deployment Rings, and the NATO Medal. Whereas, Michael Ernst was remembered by his commanding officer as an exceptional teammate and dedicated sailor who used his talents and skills towards our nation's hardest challenges while selflessly mentoring his teammates. Whereas, Michael Ernst's legacy of patriotism and dedication is an inspiration to all Cohasset residents and Americans. Whereas, the people of Cohasset, Mass. have great admiration and the utmost gratitude for Michael Ernst who, have self, who has selflessly served his country and his service has been vital in maintaining the freedom and the way of life enjoyed by our residents at all. Now, therefore, let it be resolved that we, the Cohasset Select Board, hereby honor the service and sacrifice of Michael Ernst and urge our residents and organizations to display the American flag, particularly on October 22, 2023, the date of Mr. Ernst's dedication ceremony to recognize his service and sacrifice given under our hands and the seal of the town of Cohasset on this 10th day of October of the year 2023.
Please join me in welcoming Massachusetts State Representative John Mishima. Good afternoon. Uh, it is my privilege to be here with you today, and I am grateful to um, Chris Pratt and to the Board of Selectmen for including me as they honor and uplift and commemorate um, our fallen servicemen and his family. Uh, always should we remember to thank our veterans, to uplift their service and their families. Uh, so I think it is particularly poignant to be here today on this beautiful October day, here in this very special, quiet, reflective space that the town of Cohasset has created. Uh, and I'm honored to, to participate and to bring to you from the Massachusetts House of Representatives a citation to uplift the commemoration. Um, the citation reads very simply, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to the town of Cohasset and the Veterans Memorial Committee and uplifts its recognition of the rededication to the Cohasset Gold Star Mothers Memorial with a special recognition to Gold Star Mother Mary E. Edmonton, Mary and her son, Chief Special Welfare Officer, Welfare Officer of the Town and it is offered this day, October 22nd, um, by the Speaker of the House and myself as your state representative. And I do just want to also say that I love that you have chosen October 22nd as his, as his entry day um, to really to commemorate his choice of profession, his service and dedication, um, because he what may be who step forward in service, and it's their, cho oh, excuse me, it's their choice and dedication. And regardless of how their service ends, it was that commitment, that love of their country, that patriotism, their willingness and desire to serve. And that's the important thing that we should always remember. And I'm just so honored to be part of the community of Cohasset as you welcome home this fine young man and his amazing service uplift his memory and embrace his mother in particular and his whole family. Um, and I'm just honored to be here with you today. Thank you, Representative Machine. Please welcome Massachusetts State Senator Patrick Obama. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a real honor to be able to be here today. Um, quite honestly, these are the toughest events that we have the opportunity of going to. There are no words that we can say that can properly express our condolences to the entire Earth family. Uh, to be able to be at the dedication earlier today, uh, I can't even imagine the emotions that were going through all of you as they revealed Michael's name on that plaque. This is a, uh, a very trying time for this community, and it has been for over eight months now. And it's being able to come together like this with fellow Gold Star families who have been able to meet in the, um, the moments before we started this ceremony. It's to be able to come as a community and continue to support Michael's legacy and his sacrifice. I always think that on the South Shore, and it's not unique to us, but I think that it's one of the things that really stands out as a special part of the place that we live in, is how much we focus on making sure that we support our veterans, whether they be our active veterans and we're sending care packs to them when they're away, whether they're a retired veteran and we're thanking them for their service, but especially when veterans make the ultimate sacrifice for our nation. We come together as a community, and we will continue to come together as a community. One of the things that we do up at the State House on Veterans Day is we, need, we read into the record every single name of every veteran who's died in the war in terror and even since the, the war in terror started in 2001. And Michael's name will be added to that this year and we'll be able to read his name. And it's not to provide any sense of comfort whatsoever. It's to let you know that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts will never forget Michael and his sacrifice in this community. Thank you.
Thank you, Senator O'Connor. our next speaker, who serves as a chapter president of the American Gold Star Mothers Organization and previously served as department president and a member of the National Executive Board. She was elected and served as the national president of the American Gold Star Mothers Organization from 2021 to 22. With multiple generations of military service in her family, including her son, the late specialist Richard Hubble, U.S. Army, she knows well the meaning of service and sacrifice. Please welcome Gold Star Mother, Joanne Maitland. Good afternoon. This morning I sat over on my son's grave and I asked him for one thing, and that would be the son. Please. If anything you can do for me right now, we need the sun. You've had a heck of a go up here in Massachusetts. And being from Florida, you know I'm a bit chilly. Good afternoon. I would like to begin this rededication ceremony by thanking Glenn Pratt and his team for their foresight and hard work to perpetuate the Cohasset Gold Star Memorial's mission and purpose. This memorial ensures we will never forget Cohasset's fallen and we will always honor their mothers. Dave Hassan, your skill as an artist and ability to capture bittersweet meaning of this memorial and its history shines on the dullest of New England days. I have bragged about our memorial worldwide. I have never seen anything like it, ever. I'm going to ask right now, if any active duty military personnel are here, would you please stand? None. Thank them anyway. Would all veterans please stand? If you can. Thank you. We are free because of you. Now, any Gold Star family members, and a special thank you to my Department of Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Gold Star Mothers who traveled to be with me today and to honor Mary. Would all Gold Star family members please stand. Thank you. As you heard, my name is Joanne Churchill Maitland, mother to specialist Richard Buckingham Hubble III. Buck died December 3rd, 2002, while on active duty in Killeen, Texas. He was the United States Army Charlie Company Heavy Cav. But I remember as a child standing on Border Street watching the Memorial Day and Veterans Day parades seeing a convertible pass with Gold Star Mother's banner on it. We continue to remember these ladies today and every day with our amazing memorial. 
No one understands a gold star mother like another gold star mother. There is a knowing, an understanding, and it is a club that no one ever wants to be eligible to join. It is my honor to be here today for Mary Ernst, her husband Bob, their family. Chief Specialist Warfare Operator Michael Ernst is a hero on so many levels. He has been eulogized and now we'll have insight of what makes a hero. Some say it comes from good stock. I believe that family and heritage play a huge role in character. But then sprinkle in social circumstances, friendship, education, and role models which make up outstanding individuals. However, Bob and I were talking about this. I feel there is a special bond between a mother and a son. There is a wonderful difference with a daughter's love, especially in the female relationship of becoming a mother. We watch as they are determined to walk, understand their wonderment at the discovery of something new, and hold our breath as they spread their wings and learn to fly. When they transition into manhood, we often wonder, when did that happen? Mary shared with me that Mike had many empathetic and leadership traits early on, helping her with his sister Maggie's care, and later with his education. Induction into the Navy SEALs and then sharing his knowledge with others. One thing that struck me about Mike and many of those that joined the military is how they hate evil and will do anything to eradicate it. When Mike talked about a trip to the Nazi prison camp at Auschwitz, he was clearly moved by the pain hidden within those walls. Mary raised six children with her husband, Bob. Good stock, to be sure. When I asked her what she did for a living, I quickly realized what a stupid question that was. She was a mother to six. Enough said. It is an unimaginable feeling when your child is deployed. You have given them to the service of their choice for their training and work. On the other side is that possibility that they may get hurt or worse. You breathe a sigh of relief when they are out of harm's way, but for some, the knock comes to their door nevertheless. Mike had a mantra that he lived by, which is, when faced with what happens to be insurmountable odds, you have two options, do nothing or do something. He always found that doing something saw him through to the other side. Mary in her grief journey is doing something by putting one foot in front of the other, sometimes one second at a time. Please believe that Mike is very proud of you, Mary. It is a common euphemism among those that are grieving that the sadness comes in waves. Picture the surf at Rocky Beach. On a stormy day, you are hit by a wave, dragged under, spun around, and then propelled back up. Upon resurfacing, the sun is shining. You are out of it, temporarily. It was promised to me that someday the grief, not the loss, would get different. Not easier, just different. The new normal that your family is walking through will someday be different. We know the love you have for Mike will never diminish. It will always be with you. He is always with you because he is a part of you. Today, Cohasset is proud to, rede to rededicate our Gold Star Mothers Memorial to all the Gold Star Mothers and to you, Mary Arts, in memory of your son, your hero, SOC, Michael Arts, United States Seal. Thank you.
welcome the President of the American Legion Auxiliary, Brenda Douglas. Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to tell you that I'm very honored to be a part of this service here today. We are gathered here today for a grateful and patriotic duty to rededicate this memorial to those women whose lives have been saddened by the ultimate sacrifice of war. The loyalty and devotion that they have shown in order that they may be of service to others has ever been an inspiration and the guiding light to all. We pay homage to them. May, may we again dedicate our organization and ourselves to the sacred ideals which are here represented ever remembering that the American Legion Auxiliary's principal service is for God and country. At this time, I'd like to offer a prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we stand before you here today as loyal citizens of our country, grateful for all its splendid heritage. We ask your blessings upon our great republic. May America remain free forever. We pray for your blessings as we remember with love our departed heroes and those they left behind. A war demands the life's, life's blood of its fighters and therefore takes the heart's blood of their mothers and fathers. We ask your blessing upon this memorial. Let it stand in perpetuity. May it bring comfort to those bereaving families and serve as an inspiration to all who come after them to honor and cherish. The ideals of those heroes and other parents, both here on earth and those who rest in your loving embrace. Amen. In closing, I'd like to say that with this rededication of this memorial, I dedicate our Cohasset Unit 118 to the faithful service of our country and to the preservation of the memory of those that died that liberty might live. Thank you, Brenda. Gold Star Mother Joanne Maitland and Mary Ernst will now place a wreath upon the memorial. Honor Guard, salute our fallen hero.
Mais c'est bien. God bless America will now be signed by the list of ceremony today. Thank you for all, all for joining us at the rededication of this Gold Star Mother's Memorial in honor of Mary Ernst and Chief Michael Ernst. Please join us at the Classic American Legion Post for a celebration of life of Michael T. Ernst. Thank you.